I think just talking about food sort of stimulates some of the dopamine that you get from eating food. I think that's why people talk about meals that they've had before. People will be like, oh, I had the best meal last night at that restaurant, and they go on to describe the meal, and it's like, why are you doing that? Who cares? Like, who cares? I'm here at The Lion in New York City with Arthur Meyer. He's just written a book called Foods. It has a lot of great recipes, none of which are real, but they tell us a lot about the psychology of food and what makes it sound good. The most important thing when you're choosing what food you want to look for is a menu item that has a lot of syllables in its name. It doesn't matter if those words even mean anything to you, as long as they just have lots of syllables and there's a rhythmic flow. So for instance, in the book we have clumps of turkey in a bed of heavy tomato scum with softened rice poles. So something like that, lots of words, lots of syllables, sounds delicious. Sounds so delicious. Maybe I can read a couple of those. Please do, yeah. Thick crust stringer chunks. Oatmeal dumped from a paper packet into a little bowl of microwave water. Bananas Johnson. Bananas Johnson. Do we know how that differs from something like Bananas Foster? We do. Um, Bananas Johnson has the word Johnson after the word bananas, whereas Bananas Foster has the word Foster after the word bananas. I see that. Yeah. I see that. Another one would be uh, Pocolokitos style meat saucers forced into a cheddar coffin. So even though you have the word coffin in there, that word is kind of obscured by the other words that are sort of leading up to it. That's how you yeah. bury the ingredient that people don't want. In the Chesapeake Bay right now, there's uh, an infestation of catfish. Problem is, people see catfish on the menu, they don't really want to eat it. So what they do is they'll say, wild caught Chesapeake Bay. Yeah blue catfish. Yeah. Kind of like you bury the coffin. Yes. They will bury catfish at the very end after yeah. all of these. After all these lively descriptors that, that really enhance, yeah, that bad item at the end that you're, that you're actually eating. And if your menu does not include dollar signs, mm -hmm. you spend more money. Is that right? You just put a number, just 16. Yeah, just 16. Not $16. I remember the first time I saw that, I was so confused. I was like, what is that? But then I put it together, and I'm like, oh, that's how much it costs. What did you think it was, 16? I don't know, maybe like that's the number of that food that you get. Or if you do like 16 push-ups, yeah. they'll give it to you for free. That would be a great business model Yeah. in today's fitness-obsessed culture. I've always thought a good idea for a restaurant would be that you can't eat a meal until you've waited on another customer at that restaurant. Wow. I don't think anyone would go to that restaurant because it's a, it's a bad idea for a restaurant, but I think it's a good idea for a bad idea for a restaurant. I was wondering if maybe you could take a look at the menu here, mm -hmm. the line, and tell them what they're doing right, tell them what they're doing wrong. Um, this one's a great menu item. They have one called Organic Chicken Under a Brick Winter Panzanella. This is a great menu item because um, it uses the word brick. Mm -hmm. which is a rare, it's a word rarely used with food. And then also winter panzanella, no one has ever heard of panzanella. So it, it confuses, it confuses the customer into ordering the, that item. So as a doctor, I think about ways to make people interested in eating healthier food. Mm -hmm. There's these crazy commercials yeah. for Pop-Tarts. Yeah. Really a, a terrible thing for you, yes. you know, nutritionally. But they're colorful and they have the word pop in them pop. it makes you feel like you're in the zeitgeist of breakfast foods yeah like hey everybody else must be eating this yeah Katy perry must eat Katie, this. yeah Katy perry Rihanna. must eat. yep uh, uh michael bob michael dylan. jordan bob dylan amelia Earhart. what i would do is i would change celery to be called cool celery i would change carrots to be called like you know holy crap these are rad carrots you will be ostracized if you don't eat broccoli so actually threatening kids with social ostracism. I think you could go so far as a minor threat. But if we had to turn negative yeah. toward Pop-Tarts. Maybe call them squirmy Pop-Tarts. That's kind of gross. Yeah, yeah, I would not eat that. No. I would use the word good before a certain food if it, if it needed, if it was good. I like this notebook too, by the way. Oh, thanks. Yeah. It's just where I keep my notes, some, some thoughts. <laughs> I'm a writer, so things come to me, you know? <laughs> I like you, Jim. Ah, uh, thanks. Yeah.